Well, hi everyone, it's Mouse. I wanted to just pop on and give kind of a little update because some things have changed. And also to kind of introduce myself to some new subscribers that I've acquired um, and to go over some gear switches that I've made throughout the year. Um, and Isis, of course, is going to pop in and say hi every once in a while because that's the way she is. So, okay. I'm going to go over some of my new plans at the end of this video. Um, so let's just jump right into kind of the gear switches that I've made. Starting off first with the kitchen. Um, I've always used this. It's the Tokes 750 milliliter um, cup and dish kind of thing and it's got the lid so that I can boil water easily. I love this. It's nice and light. It suits me just perfectly. The old stove was the Primus Classic. I've used this on the long trail and on many of my section hikes up until recently and I liked this. I liked the larger burner and it fits, you know, it fits it just perfectly. The problem is that it's really, it's heavy and I really wanted to start cutting out some pack weight for myself. So the Primus is going and in will step the MSR Pocket Rocket. I really like this. I've used it on a number of test hikes up until it you know, started getting cold here in New Hampshire recently. Um, it's very easy to use. It packs down perfectly. It's super light. Um, and it just gives me that much more freedom. So out with the Primus, in with the MSR Pocket Rocket. Now for dishes, I was using a Sea to Summit bowl and a Sea to Summit mug. Takes up a lot of space. Again, it's weighty. So dumping those in favor of using the Tokes mug and a collapsible Sea to Summit mug for my coffee. I was going to do a one pot system um, and I tried it on one of my overnights recently using the um, the hot lips to prevent you from burning your lip on coffee or any other hot drink that you might have. But I found that I really needed coffee and oatmeal instead of oatmeal and then, you know, coffee and the same thing. Um, so it just wasn't working out. So I am going to do the, the two kind of vessel system with the collapsible mug. Now, pretty standard, my long handle spork will always be my choice of utensil. And the Sawyer Micro is my water filtration. I like this. The flow is great for me. Um, I think I've really just learned how to finesse it and make it work for me. It fits right onto a smart water bottle. And um, hi, Isis. Can you get down, please? Hmm? All right, get down. Sorry. <laughs> it fits onto a smart water bottle and it just, it works for me. And I've been using it for, gosh, I think like two years now, maybe a little bit more. Um, I don't really keep track of these things. So that will be it for water filtration. And for storage, I have the Light AF um, Bear Bag, um, and it has the hanging kit as well. Um, so food will be nice and protected, as always when I don't have a bear box available to me. So that's the kitchen. Okay, so tents. I was using the Lightheart Gear Solo. Um, I loved this tent. I think it's still a great tent. I was finding that it was not big enough for both me and the dog, first of all. Um, and I could only really sit up it was, it was getting kind of awkward for me. Um, as an older hiker, I'm finding that I need a lot more room. So out with the Lightheart Gear Solo and in with the investment of, that's right, the z -Pax Duplex. I picked up the white z -Pax Duplex. Um, I think it was summertime when I did that. So 
I did this and instead of you know sticking with just the trekking poles I also got the freestanding kit hello again Isis all right get down I got the freestanding kit because I do do a lot of camping on tent pads and sometimes the ground is too hard for stakes so I thought that this would be a worthy investment too it's really easy to set up and what I'm going to do is include pictures of both the Lightheart gear set up and the Z-Pax duplex set up as well. Um, I'm really impressed with the Z-Pax duplex. The two times that I've used it out on the trail so far, it has um, really suited me well. Both me and the dog have plenty of room now. Um, and we're not constantly on top of one another. So I think that is going to be um, the tent from now on. Okay, keeping with the weight savings... I made a lot of changes to my sleep system as well. Um, and I was using the Big Agnes Aircore Ultra Sleep Pad. Um, switched it out to the Nemo Tensor. This is uh, insulated long and wide. And I'm gonna set up my new sleep system actually once I get done explaining everything. So. I moved to the long and wide because in my mind I was like, well, A, I like to roll around a lot. Um, so having a wider sleep pad made sense to me. I chose the longer one thinking that maybe, just maybe the dog would settle down at the end and have enough space and I would have enough space for myself too. That hasn't happened yet because she still likes sleeping on top of me, so it's a work in progress. But I do like the Nemo Tensor. It gives me a little bit of a weight savings between the Big Agnes. I didn't do a lot of changes to my sleep system weight-wise. I went, this is my summer bag. It's the Aegis Max. Um, it says it goes down to 30 degrees, but I really think it's more of like a 40 or a 50 degree bag. So that's why it's my summer bag. Um, so the Aegis Max was my summer bag. I switched it out to the Enlightened Equipment Revelation quilt. This is a 30 degree quilt. And again, I'm gonna set it up in just a few minutes with my new sleep system. So this is gonna be my permanent one. Um, for all seasons because it's a quilt I can lay it out and you know really it's more versatile and it's a little bit lighter than my 30 degree Kelty Galactic that um, I've been using in the colder weather. I like this one but it's again it's heavier so switching down to just one multi-purpose quilt I think is going to be a real benefit for me. All right, so as you can see, I've set up the new sleep system. This, again, is the Nemo Tensor Long and Wide and the Enlightened Equipment Revelation quilt that I ordered. It is the 30 degree quilt. Um, black and purple are my two favorite colors. So um, there it is. Now, a quilt, of course, is different from a sleeping bag because it does have the cinch at the bottom. Um, and I'll actually get into the sleeping bag in just a minute. So again, the difference between a sleeping bag and a quilt, it's cinched at the bottom rather than having a closed bottom. And it is strapped to the sleeping pad with, um, kind of a strap system. So you're sleeping more on the sleeping pad and less on a full sleeping bag. Okay, I hope you all can see me. Um, this is actually the first time I've gotten into the quilt on the sleeping pad. 
and it actually this is it's like a live test and I can already tell that I'm gonna love this um, it's it's warm first of all um, might be just because I have a sweater on too but uh, it's comfy and I thought that it was gonna be an issue like sleeping directly on the sleeping pad but I'm pretty well wrapped into this and let's see I'm a side sleeper mostly so I'm pretty well covered this way and then I like to roll around a lot so I can roll around and reposition myself and still have plenty of coverage to keep myself warm or I can just out and out unfold fold the whole thing and just use it as like a blanket, which is primarily what I do in the summertime anyway. Um, the true test would be if the dog was out here, but she's, she's not right now. I think she's in the bedroom. So we'll have to do another live test with her some other time. But yeah, the Nemo Tensor, long and wide, and the, oops, here she comes. <laughs> Hi. And the Revelation Enlightened Equipment Quilt. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, stop. It is a good system. Okay, so that is the sleep system. I can already tell I'm really gonna like it. Um, I might actually sleep in this tonight, you never know. Okay, all right, all right, gotta go, bye. So just another little miscellaneous switch that I made. I was using the um, Petzl. It's a Takina headlamp. Um, so you can see it's got the, the pretty sturdy strap and everything like, like that. Um, Petzl's are, are great headlamps. I just made the switch to the Zipka headlamp this is this is literally it I mean it, it packs down like that um, and the strap is just a simple string that kind of gets sucked right into it so I, it's no real weight savings between the two of them but it just packs down better I put this in my fanny pack so that I always have it handy um, so it's just, just a matter of being more packable. Um, and it's really comfortable. And around camp, I can literally just like put it on my hand if I don't feel like wearing it, or I can like put it on um, a bottle or something in my tent for like a reading light at night. Um, it's a little bit more versatile. Um, so yeah, I switched it over to the Zipka from Petzl for my headlamp. And I'm not going to open this up. This is my Six Moon Design umbrella. I've started using that for my rain system. I like the umbrella. Um, I sweat a lot. And when you're wearing a raincoat, you're sweating. There's no breathability. Um, so now I can just put up the umbrella and just keep walking in whatever clothes that I'm wearing. You're going to get wet regardless. So you might as well be comfortable. Um, and I would much rather be aired out than, you know, stuck in a sweaty raincoat all day. So backpacks was the last kind of major investment that I made um, during this whole pandemic that's been going on. Primarily I was using for overnights and longer trips the ULA Catalyst. I like these packs. My day pack is the Photon. Um, the things that I didn't like was the lack of breathability, um, on the back. And I just found I would like be drenched in sweat and it just, it wasn't comfortable anymore. Um, and frankly, this is a little bit too big now for all the other gear that I have. So out with the catalyst, although I might go back to it, you never know, in with the Z-Pax Arc Blast. Um, I think it was the Glastonbury um, Wilderness video that I did that I really, really just appreciated and, and loved this pack and really came to um, enjoy it. 
it does have the function where you can arc the back to get the better airflow to take it off of your back. So less back sweat for me, which is a plus. It's light um, and all together, I think my base weight went down to about 17 pounds. Um, I'm not an ultralight hiker. I like ultralight gear because I have to carry everything for my dog. Um, so I kind of scrimp on my gear and make sure that it's as light as possible so that I can carry everything that she needs and make sure that she's comfortable. Um, so the arc blast just seemed to be the most logical one for me. Uh, and I just, I really like it. Um, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. I really, 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 here we go with the changes. I really want to get out there. Um, it's the holidays, so that in itself poses some logistical nightmares. I'm a big family person, so I've got, you know, some family obligations going on. We've got Thanksgiving, we've got Christmas, but in between then, I really want to get out. Um, I had plans to start the Mid-State Trail from Rhode Island to the border of New Hampshire. Um, but that got scrapped because of um, some travel restrictions through Massachusetts. I'm a healthcare worker and because of that, I, I don't just have myself to think of, I have my clients that I have to think of. I'm a social worker. So I could have, you know, proven that I didn't have COVID and traveled back and forth. Um, quarantined if I had to, but again, that would t that would cut into my job and I can't really do my job if I can't see my people and I don't want to jeopardize them. So I have to go along with the travel restrictions and find other things to do. Um, I've been doing that pretty much the whole pandemic. It started when I was going to do the whole state of Maryland on the AT back in April and that got scrapped. And several other plans throughout the year have gotten scrapped and now the mid-states trail is scrapped so what am i gonna do <laughs> well maine is still open so i'm gonna try to chip away at the maine miles as far as i can go into winter time because because again i hike with the dog and i'm motioning because she's right over there um because i hike with my dog some of the main stuff is pretty rugged in the winter time, so I don't want to put her through that. So at a certain point, that's going to stop if it ever starts up. Um, but there's always springtime. Then there's the Sunapee Ragged Kearsarge Greenway for, I think it was 75 miles. It's a loop. So that is looking like a good chunk of section hiking that I can do to get that done. I've already done the Monadnock Sunapee Greenway, which is the lower part of it. Um, so that makes sense. So that's an option. And then I can just pick and choose different peaks to do, um, different snowshoe um, adventures to go on. There's a lot that I can do and still stay safe and stay um, engaged with my work and ride out this stupid pandemic. So it's looking like I have a long weekend for Thanksgiving this week. And I'm really hoping that Saturday, the dog and I can at least get out and do um, a small day hike or, you know, whatever the weather's going to allow. I've got a couple of ideas in mind, some big, some small. So we'll see what pans out and uh, how the week goes. So everybody have a safe, happy, and healthy Thanksgiving. Um, see the loved ones that you can and enjoy your time and we will catch you all out on the trails next time. All right. Bye.